Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Epiphany. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter eight, verses fourteen to twenty-one. The disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And Jesus cautioned them, saying, "Watch out! Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees." And the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, "Is it because we have no bread?" And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, "Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear?" And do you not remember, when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? This is the word of the Lord. When will you understand? When Jesus mentioned the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod, we thought that Jesus was specifically warning his disciples to beware of the words and deeds of the Pharisees or Herod. However, throughout the entire gospel lesson. Jesus actually did not explain the meaning of these two yeasts in detail. If you take a closer look, you will find that Jesus was actually teaching the disciples tirelessly, hoping that their eyes could see visibly and their ears could hear clearly. Unfortunately, at this stage, the disciples still could not fully understand and recognize the Savior before them. When Jesus was performing various earthly ministries, his disciples still lacked the understanding in many aspects. For example, after they saw Jesus feeding the five thousand and the four thousand respectively, they still did not fully understand the power of Jesus Christ. How rich and abundant is the life given by the Lord? In the hearts of the disciples. It was difficult for them to understand that the power and teachings of this rabbi before them actually far surpassed the laws of Moses. In order for these disciples to understand the relevant truth, they must first understand the significance of Jesus' warning about yeast and the important truth behind the miracles of feeding the five thousand and the four thousand. Regarding the two warnings about yeast, Jesus actually did not make the most severe criticism of the Pharisees or Herod here. The thoughts of these Pharisees have long been firmly rooted in the norms of the Mosaic law. Their law-based thinking was deeply ingrained and not easy to change. Even though, judging from the appearance, The Pharisees seemed to be very close to God, but their hearts were definitely far away from God. As for the two miracles of feeding large crowds, Jesus actually hoped that these disciples who saw the miracles with their own eyes would truly feel the power and love of God. It is worth paying attention to the three questions Jesus asked. Do you have eyes to see? Do you have ears to hear? Do you not remember? Jesus did not want to attract everyone in the world to believe in him through two miracles. Otherwise, he could have been crucified earlier, risen earlier, and used the most dramatic method to demonstrate the power of God. But Jesus did not do this. The miracles themselves were not the most important. 
Jesus wanted to use these miracles to help his disciples understand the attributes and characteristics of God. It is a pity that these disciples who saw the miracle of five loaves and two fishes failed to see the message Jesus wanted to express, and they failed to hear the key points of Jesus' teachings to them. They even did not remember Jesus' attitude and kind heart when he performed these miracles. This was, of course, very disappointing to Jesus, because the characteristics of Jesus' own life were originally revealed through these two miracles of feeding the crowds. Don't forget that those five loaves or seven loaves were all broken by Jesus and distributed to the crowds. Does this action of breaking bread seem familiar? Yes, this is exactly the important action in the Holy Communion. By breaking this small amount of bread, Jesus was able to feed a large number of people. This foretells the suffering and death that Jesus would later face. At the moment of crucifixion, what was broken was Jesus' own body. Later, when the church repeatedly celebrated the Holy Communion, we were reminded once again how Jesus gave salvation to everyone in the world by breaking his body. As the season of Lent is about to begin, I hope that we will all prepare our hearts and in these 40 days prepare to welcome Jesus Christ, who will have his body broken. His passion and his resurrection. And it is my prayer that in our lives we can all comprehend and understand the truth that God reveals in our lives. Let us have a time of reflection. Do you consider yourself a person with high ability of understanding? What truths has God given you to understand recently regarding your faith? God uses miracles to allow people to see or hear His power. Have you ever experienced a miracle in your life? What kind of situation was it? Every time you participate in Holy Communion, how do you feel when the celebrant breaks the bread? Why? Let us pray. Merciful Lord, thank you that you often reveal yourself through different methods including some signs and wonders, though many times we do not have the ability of understanding to see or hear your message. Grant us grace, Lord, so that we may have the heavenly wisdom, be able to comprehend and understand you more, and enable us to always live in your saving grace through the fellowship of the Eucharist. This we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.